Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of Metropolis Arsenal. Today, I'm going to talk to you about the process of going from the Army Reserves or the Army National Guard to active duty. Uh, I did this process about six years ago, maybe five. Um, it was back in 2018-ish. But uh, the process was a little confusing to navigate because I wasn't familiar with it. Um, so... Uh, this is going to try to help you guys out. I've got it down to about four or five steps. Uh, step one is if you are <clears throat> in the Guard or Reserves, uh, what you need to do is you need to talk to your unit, talk to your chain of command, and then talk to a recruiter. Now, keep in mind, this is your career so that you uh, need to be able to make the decision that this is what's going to be best for your career. Um, you know, some units might try to get you to stay there, uh, but ultimately, it's your choice, it's your decision, um, and you have to make the most out of your career. I came to a, a point in time where I needed to make the decision of, is my civilian career going to take off, or is my do I want to pursue a career in the Army? Um, I, at that time, I felt like I would regret not seeing <clears throat> the active duty side of the house, um, I wanted to see where my career would go and uh, what kind of opportunities it would provide. Um, it offered quite a bit. Uh, I learned a lot that I would never have learned on the civilian side. Uh, so obviously people succeed in it, so it does very well for them. Um, so once you find your recruiter, you are going to uh, fill out all the necessary paperwork. Same thing, just like you're going uh, from day one as a brand new recruit. You have to fill out your background check, your physical, everything. Um, on top of that, you have to get a condition of release, a DD form 368. Um, I believe the recruiter will provide that. If not, you can go online at armypubs.com and download it and submit it through your unit, which is usually going to be your unit administrator. Um, that's what we have in the reserves. I'm assuming the guard probably has something very similar. Um, it'll have to be signed off. It'll have to go through battalion, brigade, and then up to the first general officer. This can take quite a while. Normally, it's supposed to take about 30 days. I mean, not 30 days, 90 days, um, but it can take longer than that. Mine took about six months. I want to say it was a little over six months, uh, but it was you know, a lot going on. I mean, you got to think about you know, reserve units, they meet once a month. You don't know when those dates are going to coincide. And there's a lot of other papers that they are looking at uh, other than yours. So persistent phone calls uh, seem to help quite a bit. Um, so once you get your uh, 368 back, you take that back to the recruiter, hand it in. Uh, that is your condition of release. It gives you the date of when your release date is. And then your active duty time will start uh, normally the day after. Um, so after that, you're going to take a PT test. Make sure that you are in physical, uh, the physical standards of the Army or whatever branch you're in um, so that you meet those. And uh, that will be taken usually at the recruiting station or at your armory, um, wherever your unit drills. Um, in addition to that, if you need any MOS specific testing, you will have to go to the MEP station and um, take that, uh, such as like the D Lab or I'm not sure what else testing um, they have. But uh, once you take the, take your any kind of MOS specific testing, um, you will go to MEPS just like you did when you first entered service. Uh, this time it's going to be a little bit different. You kind of are treated more like an adult. Um, uh, I remember for one instance, um, you know, they were just kind of being typical, I don't know, pushing people through or whatever. Um, this guy kind of had a snarky attitude and I held up my ID and, and he saw that, you know, going transitioning over. So it was a little bit better after that. Um, so you go through maps, uh, you are told your job, what bonuses or anything that you're entitled to, anything within your contract, you will go over your contract again. Make sure that you read it very, very thoroughly. 
all right? Because sometimes recruiters like to promise things um, that are maybe not backed up on paperwork. So just make sure that what you sign is exactly what you understand to be in your contract to include how many years of service, any incentives, bonuses, schools, things like that. Make sure you check those out, all right? Because you don't want to go through uh, reclass, you know, and you were promised to go, uh, I don't know, Fort, Fort Drum, you know, and you wind up in Alaska. Um, so yeah, just make sure that you are very aware of that. I cannot stress how much, uh, importance it is to go through your contract. Um, and then after that, you are going to be shipped out, uh, to, to reception. So when I was doing it through reception again, uh, you know, you get on the bus and all that stuff. Um, the drill sergeants come on the second time I went through, it had been like eight years after I'd first gone through. So when I went through was during the surge back in like 2010. And it was just like insane drill sergeants yelling all over the place. Uh, 2018, it was a little bit more uh, toned down. And I don't know if that's just because I was used to it already. Um, but the fear factor definitely was not there for me, but it's also because I'd already been through it. <clears throat> so I kind of knew what to expect. Um, they separated everybody from prior service who was, uh, transitioning onto active duty or coming back into service. And they separated all the new entry soldiers, the, uh, um, IETs, um, initial entry. Yeah. Um, so you kind of get split off. You, you, uh, as, as prior service, you get to kind of keep your stuff. You get to keep your laptops, cell phones, things like that. Um, uh, they will, they will separate you from the rest and, uh, you get treated with a little bit more, um, I'll say adultness. Um, you know, we got, uh, tossed into a barracks. Um, it was all open bay or whatever, but we were left alone. We were told what time to form up. Uh, the proper uniforms, all that stuff, you know, basic accountability things. Um, we went through the process. We were able to expedite through the reception process. So normally it takes four to seven days, depending on what people have to do. It took us maybe two days because we could hop, hop around uh, as we saw fit to get all of our stuff checked off. Uh, if you have any, you know, shots that you have to get, um, you know, any kind of vision, hearing tests, physicals, things like that. Uh, if you need new, new gear, new uniforms, uh, you just, you get to expedite through all that. You don't have to get your hair cut, or at least we didn't at my reception. Um, that threw a lot of the, of the new trainees off. Um, but that's what they were used to. That's what they were, uh, you know, being told to do. So that was kind of interesting to kind of like take a step back and see how the process works. Uh, cause you know, you get to see it on YouTube and things like that, but to actually like be there in person, it was kind of interesting to see um, how the drill sergeants, I'll just say, kind of heard all, all these new civilians as they're being transformed into soldiers. So that was kind of a unique and uh, interesting experience. But uh, those are the five steps. It's relatively a straightforward process, but it can take quite a bit, um, you know, getting depending on how your life was when you first enlisted to when you make the decision to transition to active duty. You know, if you get married, if you have kids, you have to get those birth certificates and things like that. Um, and you have to build a whole new profile of paperwork. Um, so that uh, just make sure that you get a very good recruiter who um, is, is very, is very good at communicating because you have certain timelines that you have to meet. And oftentimes I think the recruiters, uh, are kind of doing you a favor. I don't know exactly how it works out with their numbering scheme, as far as like prior service counting towards, um, like new, new numbers on how they meet their numbers and stuff of recruits. I don't, I'm not exactly sure because I'm not a recruiter never have been, but, uh, <clears throat> Make sure you get a good one. Make sure you cover everything with them, exactly what you want to do, exactly what you want to do in the Army, and make sure that it is all reflected in your contract. So that's 
really all I've got. Uh, I'm going to start doing some more of these videos. Um, I think the next one is, uh, I don't know what the topic of it is, but I'll think of something really cool. Um, it might be some stories from maybe my time in uh, either the reserves or active duty or something. So we'll kind of, uh, I don't know, we'll figure it out. It'll be fun um, and it'll be, it'll be entertaining. So anyway, appreciate you watching. Uh, click subscribe. I'm not doing AI anymore. That was a really bad idea. I lost like 10 subscribers from it, so I'm not doing that anymore. But uh, yeah, so anyway, I appreciate you guys, and I will see y'all in the next video. Take your easy.